vegans continue to disguise their diet of sugar and slop under the idea of health. Yet, the opposite is true. They are depriving their bodies of nutrition only found in animal foods and acting as if they are in their optimal physical state. Let's see how this young man stays lean, fit, and mentally satisfied. Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome back to another full day of eating vlog with me. I have just... I feel like I say this in like every other video, but I have actually just come back from swimming, which means, which means, well, which actually means that my actual breakfast, like proper breakfast, is in the oven because I'm roasting up some Japanese sweet potatoes, which by the way, I don't know why they take three times longer than regular ones, but anyways, but yeah, like I've said a million times before, the hunger after swimming is like, you need to do the 20,000 calorie challenge or something. So while I'm waiting for my sweet potatoes to roast, I whipped up a smoothie just because I wanted something like sweet, refreshing, hydrating, and also full of goodness. So in this mix, we have got, so yeah, in here I have got some frozen mango. I think I've spoken about my conspiracy theory about frozen mango before, because it's like, I bet they don't wait until it's like properly ripe to freeze it. Do you know what I mean? So we're kind of just like blending Anyways, it's a whole other thing. So yeah, frozen mango and then a quarter of a cup of hemp seeds. I always put that in my smoothies like you guys know. Then just for some extra green goodness, I put in some romaine lettuce. I would usually use like spinach, spinach. And then to bump things up further, I put in a scoop of Thrive. And I've spoken about Thrive loads of times on this channel because Thrive is pretty much the only supplement, if you want to call it a supplement, that I take every day. Just because even though I feel like my diet's very balanced, it gives you a full spectrum of nutrients, and it's also kind of a gut health formula. It's a probiotic as well. So yeah, and usually I would just neck it down with some water, but if I'm making a smoothie, then goes in here. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this smoothie is pretty good. It's very sweet. I gotta give him some credit here. That smoothie is unrealistically green and bright compared to what the other vegans are making. Usually they end up with like some dark brown, green, or purple slop. Uh, so, so this looks pretty good in comparison. Uh, but it's very classic, unnatural foods, uh, no real vitamin, mineral elements, and fatty acid content to these meals. Uh, we have mango, uh, which is just really frozen sugar. You know, by the time you process the fruit, uh, blend it up, oxidize it, any semblance of vitamin C and whatever small amount of vitamins were in the mango devolve into sugar. The hemp seeds are seeds. Uh, they don't digest efficiently in the human digestive system. And all seeds are high in anti-nutrients, phytates, you know, bind to minerals in the body. And a lot of these seeds also have phytoestrogens like lignans. Romaine lettuce, really just a high water content vegetable uh, with no real vitamin content. And this kind of bothers me as a pet peeve where these people make a smoothie that might hypothetically taste good, and then they add vegetables to it, yet they don't understand that adding vegetables to a smoothie isn't actually good for you because vegetables being good for you is one of the biggest lies we've ever been told our entire lives. And then he had that scoop of the Thrive Micronutrient Mix, which is really just a bunch of freeze-dried fruits and vegetables. And we know that fruits and vegetables only contain small amounts of water-soluble vitamins like vitamin C. They have small amounts of the plant forms of certain vitamins like carotenes and vitamin K1. And these don't efficiently convert in the body into nutrition that humans can use. And even if they did, he's not consuming them in the presence of fat. So this meal is essentially all carbohydrates, and that's how all vegan diets are. It's just carbohydrates, macronutrient energy, no actual amount of nutrition. Otherwise, these people would be as healthy as they claim to be. All right, guys, so my Japanese sweet potatoes are finally ready. These literally took like an hour and 20 minutes to make. I don't know why. The reason... I love having Japanese sweet potato for breakfast is because it tastes like vanilla cake, right? And actually these ones are very, very starchy and dry. So it's almost as if you're eating vanilla cake, but it does taste of vanilla cake. And then we can just spruce it up with some delicious sweet toppings. And of course, some peanut butter, some peanut butter. All right, so for toppings, I'm gonna to start with some fresh rasps, and these are actually locally grown. Like I've said in some of my previous videos, we are so blessed in the summer to get locally grown 
berries, like cherries, strawberries, blackberries, the whole shebang. Never Here comes the fun part. Potatoes. I usually use almond butter for this, but today I'm just in a peanut butter mood. And this is the runny, runny peanut butter from Morrison's, which I always big up because it comes in a glass jar. It's runny. Look at that. It's hella runny and smooth and it's cheap. I've also got some locally grown cherries and these are the kind of cherries. Let me show you. I'll bite into one. You see, these are the cherries that are like deep, deep purple inside, full of antioxidants. They're so sweet, just can't get enough. Do you know what? I feel like this does need a bit of salt. I don't know why I feel like it needs salt, but it does because the peanut butter is not salted. Hold on. A little sprinkle of salt and I cannot wait to dive into this and happily apply to face. This video is definitely lacking some vegan music to jam to. What it's certainly not lacking is childish behavior and craving for sweets. We are already on dessert number two of the day and it is only meal number two. Every single one of these vegans, all they're doing is literally disguising desserts as something healthy. When it's very clear that putting fruit and peanut butter on a sweet potato for breakfast is not normal. Local fruits, sweet potato, you know, I don't really have an objection to consuming these types of foods. You do have to be mindful though that they don't have micronutrients. They don't have vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids. It's just macronutrient caloric energy that he's consuming. Same thing with the peanut butter. You know, he's just sprinkling high omega-6 fat and a small amount of omega-6 fats isn't too bad and peanut butter doesn't have the highest amount of linoleic acid, but still the point is lack of micronutrient nutrition. He's only consuming calories and a high presence of omega-6 fatty acid consumption, you know, with carbohydrates, with a lack of omega-3 to balance, definitely causes inflammation and regardless of how many antioxidants he's consuming, in these local fruits. Omega-6 fats are very unstable and incredibly oxidized and you cannot consume enough vitamin E to stabilize those fats in your body. But yeah, for lunch today, I'm gonna keep it simple but very tasty and I'm gonna make a batch of my favorite dip of all time, which is a high protein dip and it's made from edamame beans, peas, tofu, lemon juice, cumin, tahini, of course, and salt, pepper, and then you can add additional things like dill or parsley if you want as well. Yeah, and you can use it as like a sandwich filler. You can just dollop it on top of salad, salad, like you would with hummus, or you can do what I'm gonna do today, which is just roast up some veggies and use it as a good old dunk. All right, so we've got lots of peas. Make sure you don't overcook them. There's nothing worse than brown, mushy peas. Literally just shock them if they're frozen for like one to two minutes. Some steamed edamame beans, and I've got about half a block of tofu. This is actually, well, it says firm, but we don't really get like proper firm tofu in the UK for some reason. But actually smooth works best in this recipe because remember you want it to be kind of smooth and creamy, kind of like hummus. And then of course you will need some good proper runny Arabic tahini, the juice of two fresh limone, a little bit of cumin, then some salt, pepper, blend it up and that's it. This is gonna make kind of a big batch. I would say like f four servings at least. Give it a little taste to see if it needs more green Anything food. Extra. Needs more green. Mmm. Perfect. All right, first of all, before I plate this up, can we just appreciate how these have roasted? Can we just appreciate the squish factor? Oh. All right, guys, there you have it. Very simple, but very tasty. And yeah, like I said, this is one of my favorite dips of all time. And I love the contrast between like the sweet potato, because obviously it's very sweet. And this is quite bitter and lemony, this dip. So good. Also, I know this is a pretty light lunch for me. You're used to seeing me eat like huge green salads, etc. But as we're going out for dinner later and we're gonna eat big, plus we're going trampolining, so I don't wanna be like too full, you know what I mean? Anyways, I'm gonna shut up now. Nothing left to do apart from happily apply to face. Not too sure about the term apply to face, considering uh, what I've heard my viewers want to do uh, to my face, whether it be good or bad. Yet we have another meal using a blender. You know, the first smoothie he had needed a blender. The peanut butter for breakfast on the potato needed a blender. Now he's using a blender to make hummus. Seeing a pattern here. Very high carbohydrate content, even more oxidized omega-6 fats. So this was sweet potatoes dipped in a mix of tofu, tahini, as well as some legumes, some peas. 
And both tofu and tahini are arguably some of the unhealthiest things you can consume because they have a very high omega-6 fat content. And as we said earlier, omega-6 fats are oxidized. They cause inflammation in the body. You know, tahini being uh, ground up sesame seeds, usually accompanied by sugar. Uh, so it's blended up, it's oxidized. Same with the tofu. All of these plant foods have been exposed to high amounts of heat or oxygen. And I've said it before on Healthy Crazy Cools videos, if you want to get a heart attack or a stroke on a vegan diet, consuming large amounts of plant fats is the best way to do it. All right, guys, so apparently, apparently Asda has now come out with their own range of 100% nuts, like 100% almonds and 100% peanuts. You know that recently I've been raving, well, to be honest, recently I've been raving about my own nut butters because they were just something else. If you haven't seen that video. If you boys and girls did not know, this young man has an obsession with fat, thick, heavy, creamy nut butters. And I can't blame him. What type of young man doesn't enjoy applying nut butter to his face every day, multiple times per day? The thing is, high omega-6 intake literally replaces all of the fats, all of the lipids in your body. So over time, it's the best way to get a heart attack or a stroke. If he doesn't have, you know, severe health consequences several years from now, that is what consuming a diet like this will lead to. You have large amounts of oxidized and rancid fats in your body. You don't have enough omega-3 to balance them because you're on a vegan diet. And you certainly don't have enough nutrition from animal foods to maximize the antioxidant capacity of your body. Nice, nice. Look how sweaty we are. Get it from the back, get it from the back. Strike the pose. So for dinner, we went to Chow Down in probably my all-time favorite vegan restaurant in London. It's actually in Hackney if anyone wants to go. They always have so many delicious options on the menu, some healthy and some, you know, just good for the soul and stuff. Also, I love that their portions are not stingy like most places these days. So many restaurants I go to and I just come out feeling unsatisfied. Hey, would you look at that? It's Vegan Evan. Uh, for those of you that don't remember, a few months ago, a Facebook video went viral of this young kid acting crazy about veganism. Like his mother told him, oh, we're going to eat animals again. And I think that's the kid. Uh, so it's a bit weird that he's making a cameo appearance here. And let's be honest, guys. Does anything smell worse than a bunch of sweaty vegans that just hit the gym in a vegan restaurant? I cannot imagine the smell in there. It's giving me giving me shivers thinking about it. Cause you know, I like to eat big, but when you go there, you know you're gonna get fed well. And yeah, the food is bomb. We got a few of their mixed salads to start, which were full of colorful veggies, lentils, black rice. Yes, black rice is the only rice I can deal with. Quinoa and a tahini sauce, which to be honest, didn't taste anything like tahini, but I'll let them off. And then we got some of their meaty style burgers, which are actually made from seitan, but they taste like sweet potato burgers. Can't really explain it, but it's the best vegan burger I've ever had, like of all time. And they also make the best thick crunchy fries and their garlic herby mayo is just something else. Also, I don't know why my eyes are so red at this point. Honestly, I wasn't high. I was just extremely tired. For dessert, we got some coffee cake. And I could to you enter this at a restaurant? Some ice cream to send it down the chute, you know? But I'm not complaining because it was absolutely delicious. Anyways, guys, I'm sending you all so much love and I'll see you all in the next video. Laters. Overall, very high food volume throughout the day. You know, these vegans go to restaurants and the sheer volume of food they are eating can only be paralleled to the lack of micronutrients in their diet. Shoveling and shoveling their faces full of these foods that aren't giving them nutrition. The easiest way to understand this is eat a high quality animal food like liver or salmon roe, even steak. The volume of steak you can eat from both a size and caloric standpoint is so much lower than vegetables. I would estimate these vegans are consuming between 
five and six pounds minimum of vegetable plant matter per day. Yet we see carnivore dieters consuming an average of one pound to one and a half pounds of food. Really goes to show what humans are meant to consume. And not only are vegans consuming a much higher volume of food, they're not even getting the nutrition their body needs. So you're eating three, four, five times as much as other people, and you're starving yourself of nutrients that are only obtained from animal foods. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and share it if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat, providing you guys with the highest quality, most affordable animal foods online. Go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com. We've recently added Wagyu beef. Guys, amazing price, 100% grass-fed and grass-finished Wagyu beef. Thanks again for joining me, guys, and enjoy the rest of your week.